Hello everyone and welcome back. This is a, two, a second part video for the design and analysis of a gable roof system. In our last video, we were able to find the dead load that the gable roof is going to see. And we were also able to find the snow load that the gable roof is going to see. Now the snow load is going to depend on where you live. So just keep that in mind. And not only that, but depending on where you live, maybe the snow load does not go govern um, so much maybe it's just the roof lab load that will govern the like construction loads and stuff like that so let's keep that in mind but for this uh example we're in new england we got a lot of snow and our snow load here is 24.5 pounds square feet and then our dead load is 10 pounds square feet so uh let me just write that down over here so what we're going to be doing now for this video is we're going to be finding the maximum moment maximum shear and we're going to size the rafters so it could withstand the anticipated loads. So let's do that right now. So what we need to know is the space in between the rafters. The rafters are spaced at 16 inches on center, or if you convert that into feet, that is 1.33 feet. So that is a, the space in between the rafters. And then with that, we're able to multiply that by the dead load, pound square feet, and the snow load uh, to get our uniform linear load. So in order to do that, just I mean it's very simple. I don't even know why I said that in order to do that. You just multiply those two together. So our uniform dead load is gonna be uh, ten times one point three three. You get thirteen point three three pounds linear feet, and then for snow it's gonna be twenty four point five times one point three three. You multiply those two together, you're going to get uh, thirty two point six pounds linear feet. Now, I want to add these two together, but I can't uh, because the dead load is at a hard, uh, is at a diagonal projection, as you can see right here. Dead load is going toward the center of the Earth, gravity, and then for snow, snow is at a, a horizontal projection. So we either convert the snow into a diagonal projection. And then we could add the two diagonal projections together, or we convert the dead load into a horizontal projection, and then we could add those two together. So what I like to do is I like to convert the dead load into a horizontal projection. So in order to do that, um, you need to know the pitch of the roof. The pitch of the roof is 12 to 12 pitch. And uh, you need to know the Pythagorean theorem. So just plug and chug. You have 12 squared plus 12 squared. You get the hypotenuse, which is 16. 97 um, then you get 16.97 divide that by the x component pitch 12 multiply that by 13.33 which is the uniform dead load that is going to give us the horizontal projection dead load which is 18.85 pounds linear feet now that we have the dead load and horizontal projection, we could add the dead load and the snow load together. So when you add those two together, we're going to get a, a total load of 51.45 pounds linear feet. Now that now that we have that, we will find a maximum moment, maximum shear. Here the rafter is a, a super supported uh, beam. So we're going to use M equals to WL squared over 8, and V is WL over 2. Uh, the length here is going to be, because it's a horizontal projection, it's going to be 12. It's close to 12. So that length is 12 feet. So just plug in the numbers in to the equation. And just, you know, just get the maximum moment, maximum shear. Very, very quick thing to do. So in the end, the maximum shear here is going to be 308.7 pounds. And then the maximum moment here is going to be 926 pounds feet. So we have a maximum or maximum shear. Uh, now, now that we have that, we need to find uh, the raft, uh, uh, adequate size for the, for the raptors. In order to do, to do that, you need to know the species in which we do know the species, the Douglas for large number two. We need to get the design values for that for that which is in the NDS supplement table uh, for a for visually graded dimension number two to four uh, inches thick if you're using something like a timber you have to use a, a different table for that so in this case we're using Douglas for large number two 
our bending FB is 900 uh, PSI. And then our, for FV, which is going to be our shear parallel to grain, is 180 PSI. Uh, I messed up there. Now, we could adjust. There's adjustment factors that we could use, um, and uh, you'll see. And just keep that in mind. This is FB is 900, and FV is 180. These are adjustment factors that we could use. So for the bending stress, we could, I mean, I'm using ASD, we could uh, use a load duration factor CD. Um, and in this case, we have two months snow load, 1.15. So we could use that. For the, for the wet service factor, uh, it's in dry conditions, so that's one. The temperature factor, it's a normal temperature, so that's one. The beams, beam stability, the rafters are going to be uh, stabilized by the sheathing. The sheathing itself is going to provide some stability to the uh, rafters. The size factor is going to depend on the size that I have for uh, the rafters. Are they 2x6, 2x8, 2x10s, 2x12s? I don't know. So depending on the size of the rafters, it's going to determine the size factor here. So we'll leave that for later. Flat use factor, we're not using that, so that's negligible right now. And then the sizing factor, we're not incising. We're not it's not pressure treated, it's not being incised, so um, this is one as well. And then repetitive factor, uh, it is repetitive because the rafters are spaced at 16 inches on center and it's being, um, uh, the loading is being spread by the sheeting. The sheeting itself, it's on top of the rafters, so if, let's say, one of the rafters fails, then the neighboring rafters will pick up the slack. So we have the repetitive factor there. So do we... The factors that we're going to be using is the duration factor and the repetitive factor for bending. Now for shear, we could use the duration factor. However, we don't we can't use well the wet service factor here is still one, the temperature factor is one, and the incising factor is one. Um, so that's that. Oh here we also have the jump modulus. We 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 don't use the low duration factor. And again, all this stuff is R1, so the jump modulus will stay the same. Uh, t -t 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 -t. I guess there's more information here that I have. Here is a size factor, and again, it depends on what the member is, the depth and thickness. So we'll, we'll touch base once we uh, getting the required section modulus and stuff. All right, so here we're um, bending members fle uh, for well, pleasure. We have this right here. So our moment for the rafters is 926 pounds feet. Okay. Now I want to find the required section modulus. So to find the required section modulus is just going to be uh, max moment. Divided by the bending stress prime. <laughs> Require. All right, so what do we know? We know the, the bending stress is 926 pounds feet. We need to convert the feet into inches, so just multiply that 12 inches per feet. And then divide that by the um, bending stress, the adjusted bending stress. So we remember that it was 900 PSI. And then we have the, the duration factor, which is 1.15 due to snow. And then we also have the repetitive factor, 1.15. Uh, when you do this, you're going to get, I see, I thought I had this down. Sorry for the delay. You need 9.335 inches cubed for um, the, section, the required section modulus. Excuse me about that. Had a brain fart. So yeah, so you know the the request section module is nine point three three five, which is good. Now uh, let's find the required 
area that we need. And I, I, I'm sure the shear is not, uh, not controlling here, but the required area is going to be, the equation is uh, 3B over 2 times FB prime. So we have 3. Now this is all, all, all could only work for something that is square or rectangular. If it's a, a like an eye joist or something uh, with a different different shape, then this will not be. You can't use this equation. So this is three hundred eight point seven divided by two times one hundred eighty times one point one five. And again, this is the duration factor here. So the required area that we need is two point two three inches square so look at so let's say we have here uh, let's say we have a 2 by 6 we have 2 by 8 we have 2 by 10s we have 2 by 12s area section modulus so I think even the 2 by 6 has enough capacity when it comes to uh, shear. I mean the area here for 2 by 6 is 1.5 times 5.5 which is 8.25 so this is good so the 2 by 6 is good when it comes to area and then if the 2 by 6 is good that means that the 2 by 8, 2 by 10 and 2 by 12 will also be good when it comes to area for shear. Now for the section modulus to calculate the section modulus let me see if I if I'm able to able to draw uh, a member here maybe not um, you have your rafter right here this would be the depth and then this right here will be the breadth B um, and then the equation for section modulus is the section modulus is b times d squared over six. So for a two by six, you're gonna need to do 1.5 times times 5.5 squared divided by six. There and that has a section modulus of 7.56. For 2 by 8, again, we have 1.5 times 7.25 squared divided by 6. Section modulus is 13.14. And then so on. 2 by 10 is 1.5 times 9.25 squared divided by 6. It's 21.39. I'll just stop there. I think 2 by 12 is like about 31.3. For the section modulus. Now, the required section modulus here is 9.35. But remember what I was talking about the size factor. Let's go back to that. The size factor here for a 2 by 6. Now, if you look at this table, go, uh, you go here where it says 2, here it says 6. So the size factor CF is 1.3 for 2 by 6, and for a 2 by 8 is 1.2, and a 2 by 10 is a 1.1. So that means that. Member, a, a smaller the member, the, the stronger it is. Uh, so they just adjust it with the size factor, the NDS. So the 2 by 6 uh, size factor is 1.3. So if I divide the 9.335 by 1.3, if I divide that, I'm going to get a required section modulus. So the required section modulus. For a two by six, is seven point eighteen, and then the required section modulus uh, for a two by eight, so this is nine point three three five divided by one point two. When you do that, it's seven point seven seven. So as you can see here, uh, the two by six having has enough section modulus for uh, for the anticipated loads that it's going to see for a moment. So we could use two by six. It's be cheaper to use, but in the end, now uh, what it, well, how much will it deflect? And now this is a habit, habitable, uh, 
attic so most likely they're gonna have some kind of jib so some kind of plaster ceiling so if it if the raptors deflect too much then the jib itself is going to crack we don't want that um, so you know even though it's working the two by six members are working would it work for serviceability I don't know so I think for the next video for uh, video three I'm going to find the deflection for 2x6, 2x8s, and 2x10s. Find a deflection, for, uh, and then not only that, we're going to find the thrust that the, color, the ceiling joists are going to see, and then how to design for the connections for the ceiling joists and raptors. So again, um, thank you. I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, if you have any questions, is please leave a comment down, um, and I'll do my best to answer the questions. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye-bye.